So we say, um, this is a re-recording of lesson one from our first live session. Um, you should know that it's not my intention to routinely re-record our live sessions, but um, I decided to do it for the first one because I know some people had tech issues, including me. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is lesson one of our new unit called Cell Bio Basics, and lesson one is called What is Life? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and describe seven functions of life and give two examples of unicellular organisms and how they carry out the different functions of life. Um, as you follow along with the slides and with my voice, um, I'm hoping that you are using this document that's been posted to the classroom. Um, this space here is for you to add your notes. Um, it's not necessary to fill in every single box. I will try to be clear about the essential notes for each lesson. Um, and if, you're, if it's, anything is unclear to you, um, feel free to reach out. So our outline, we're going to learn about some functions of life, we're going to learn the basic unit of life, and then as time allows, we will observe some of life's functions uh, in a video recording of a microscopic organism. So the functions of life, um, we agree that there are certain things that are non-living and certain things that are living. So there are certain characteristic functions of living things that they can perform. And this is the official list. So nutrition, metabolism, growth, response, excretion, homeostasis, reproduction. Um, this is the most essential piece to have in your notes, so please be listening, following along, and adding to your notes so that you can clearly define any of these terms. So nutrition is just um, obtaining energy uh, and things that your body needs. So you eat food, that's how you get your nutrition. Um, there's macronutrients in your food, proteins, fat, sugars, um, and so on and your body uses those for energy so that you can do your daily tasks. There are other things that you need that don't have calories. Um, they don't provide energy, but they provide other essential things like minerals, vitamins, um, electrolytes, right? So any of those things fall under the umbrella of nutrition. So when we're talking about nutrition, we're wondering how does this organism get the energy and other materials it needs to stay alive? Metabolism is all of the chemical reactions that are going on inside an organism. So within your body, you have tons and tons of chemical reactions that are happening at any time. Um, you are building up new cells, you are breaking down worn out cells, um, you are breathing in and breathing out, which supplies oxygen to your tissues to perform critical cellular reactions. Um, there's stuff going on all over, all the time, and the sum of all those chemical reactions, all of those chemical reactions together, is the metabolism of an organism. Growth is pretty simple. Growth just means an irreversible increase in size. So you are now bigger than you were when you were a baby. Um, there's nothing we can do to shrink you back down because you have grown. Um, to say an irreversible increase in size is just to tell you I don't mean that like a puffer fish puffed up with water, right? That's not growing um, because it can spit out that water and go back to its normal size. So irreversible increase in size. Um, response is just any kind of reaction to something that's going on in the environment. So that could be a conscious decision, like if you see your friend waving and you wave back and you go over to them, that's a response. Um, it can also be something instinctual. So if you've ever turned over a rock or a log and you see all of those insects you know, scattering, it's because they're instinctually responding to the light. They don't like the light, so their response um, is to flee from the light. Um, I'm sure you can think of many more examples. Excretion might be the trickiest one on this list. Um, I want you to know that excretion is not the same as pooping. It's not the same as defecation or egestion, which are fancy words for pooping. Um, excretion is, you probably want to write this down word for word, the removal of the waste products of metabolism. So it's the removal of the waste products of metabolism. So an example in uh, humans and other mammals, um, when you break down protein in your cells, right? You need to eat protein to survive and be healthy. When that protein gets broken down in your cells to be used as energy, there's a waste product that, that is created, and that waste product is called urea. So that waste product um, ends up in your bloodstream, and it's filtered out by your kidneys. Um, and the reason that you have to pee is for water balance, one, but the second reason is excretion. So your body needs to not build up that urea to unsafe levels. Your kidneys filter it out, and then it goes out when you pee. So that's an example of excretion. Um, another example of excretion is just breathing out. So carbon dioxide is a waste product of um, important metabolic reaction that's going on in your body called cell respiration. You might have learned that if you had living environment. If not, we'll learn it this year, don't worry. 
but the waste product of cell respiration is carbon dioxide. So every time you breathe out, you're actually performing excretion. Um, the reason that we can't count something like pooping as excretion is that it's a waste product, sure, but it's not a waste product of metabolism. So whatever is in your poop that your body wasn't able to digest, that never got brought into your own body's cells um, to be processed, right? It just went into your mouth and came out into the toilet. If you um, swallow a piece of gum, I know there's like ideas that it'll stay in your stomach for seven years. That's not true. If you swallow a piece of gum, it's just going to travel into your stomach, through your intestines, and out into the toilet. So it was never metabolically processed by your body. Um, it's just a bulk waste. Um, so it is not a waste product of metabolism. Um, that means that it is not excretion when you remove it from your body. Moving on to homeostasis. Um, homeostasis means steady state. So homeostasis is just maintaining certain uh, interior variables within an organism um, between these tolerance levels, right? So an easy example to understand is body temperature. It's very dangerous if your body temperature gets too hot. It's very dangerous if your body temperature gets too cold. So you have certain systems and regulations um, that make sure that your body is not too hot, not too cold. If you go outside and you're really hot, you'll start sweating. That cools off your body. If you're really cold, you'll start shivering. and That warms up your body. So the point is that your body's temperature needs to be not too hot, not too cold. It needs to be maintained here in the middle, and that's homeostasis. Um, another example would be like the amount of water in your body. So if you've been drinking a lot of water, you pee a lot. If you haven't been drinking very much, you don't pee very much. Um, and that's because your body is trying to keep this level of water within your cells and tissues at a constant level. That's homeostasis. And then reproduction, I think, is pretty easy to understand. Um, it's just making more of the same organism, of the same species. Um, and this can be sexual, which requires two parents. It can also be asexual, which is just one parent splitting in two in some way. So reproduction is making more individuals of the species. It can be sexual or it can be asexual.